Time everyone went out on Sankirtan, Harinam, or worked at, we had the ISKCON press began in, in New York City. I have a couple of pictures of that included here as well. Jai Jagannath, Jai Baladev Supadra Ki Jai. Sisi Radha Govinda Deva Ki Jai. If you want to experience Henry Street in those days again, see us and you can move into our ashram upstairs. <laughs> like this young man right here. And join Ram Roy, Daily Harinam, book distribution. We're yeah. bring it all back. So I may comment <laughs> I may comment a little bit along the way for some of these photos. We might even name some of the devotees that are in the photos. Vishnu Gada, Pancharatna, anyone else who knows something, they, they can comment. But I'm going to try to go through this fairly quickly. So uh, just keep your eyes on the screen over here. And those who are watching at home, watch your computer screen. And uh, let's go for it. Uh, now, how do I go down from here? One moment, please. We'll be right there. Ah. What did you click? Down? Page down? Okay. Okay. And I may have made some mistakes. Some of these may not be from BTG. Some of the other pictures may be from BTG, so forgive me if I made that mistake. So, but picture one, picture one. Harinam in Midtown Manhattan, wherever this is, the Bank of New York. Devotees walking. Most of the kirtans, as Harinams, were walking. We didn't sit and have sitting kirtans like previously, or like we do now. Here the devotees are distributing Back to Godhead magazines. That was the most popular book. We'd give them out for 25 cents, along with an invitation card. This was the system. This was the way to get people to come to the temple. You give them a BTG and an invitation card to the temple free love feast. Do you think that's Gori? No, that's not Gori. I don't think that's Gori. What is his name? I don't remember his name. Okay, we've got Brahmananda here on the left and Dalarka in the middle on the right. Ekayani. Toshan Krishna on the bottom left right. Young Toshant Krishna. Then again, Brahmananda and who's that? Uh, Rohini, Kumar. Rohini Kumar. Many other devotees. Chedi Raj and Bhakti John behind him. And uh, Just this. Saw Bhakti John yesterday. He was there yesterday. Yeah. Gadadhar, right is Gadadhar on the left? Gadadhar, yes. Gadadhar on the left. This was the, what's 26 Second Avenue? This what, is 61, what? Second. 61 Second Avenue. See, Jagannath, Baladev, Subhadra. That's the first temple I went to also. More devotees, all on Harinam, ecstatic and blissful all day. The schedule at least when I joined, the schedule was we, we actually went out at 7 in the morning to the, maybe even before 7, to the Wall Street area with Romapad Brahmachari at the time. And we used to do these Harinam in the Wall Street area, return to the temple for breakfast prasadam, and then go out the rest of the day. And the rest, other devotees would join us. Arundhati. Arundhati. Yeah, and Ekayani. Uh, is Arundhati here? Yeah. And some of these, uh, uh, Saradiya is there. She's no longer living in this world. Chedi Raj on the right, Alarka in the middle, and who? Not sure. That's Washington Square Park. Yes, yeah. Washington Square Park. So 
some more devotees chanting in the streets. I don't know. Once again, Brahmananda and uh, Bharadraj to his right, Yogeshwar. This will be all kinds of old devotees here. You recognize where that might be? Hmm. That's Gauri. This is Gauri Das and who that behind her. This is the first devotee I met when I came to the temple the first time. I forgot his name though. Brahma, yes, that's it. Brahma Vita, yes, that was it. And this is Maya Devi. Was that her name? In the front? And uh, uh, Parikshit's wife? Badra. Badra on the right. Jayadwaita Swami in the middle. Varendra on the right. And Tarun Krishna. Mandaleshwar at the top. This is one of the St. Patrick's church or cathedral. Jayadweta Maharaj was mentioning how our one of the daily scheduled prominent schedules start at 42nd Street and go up to 59th, just walking and distributing and doing kirtan. So I hope these are inspiring for you. I know the older devotees who were around then, these would bring back a lot of memories. So many of these pictures, you see all the devotees are blissfully engaging in Sankirtan. And I, I got the, the first literature with the devotees' pictures of Sankirtan. I said, I want to be like them. So happy. I've got one with you in it too, Vishnu Gada. Coming up. Oh, I don't want to lose this. Bhagavan is there. Nanda Kishore on the top right. Brahmananda and uh, Rohini Kumar on the bottom right. What is it? Arindati on the left, Alarka, top right. She's in Los Angeles now. Gadadhar, and there he is with that the smile. Jayadwaita. The great Jayadwaita smile. Still looking like that. You know, this is on Astor Place, right? And that picture is in there. Is it? Now we're, now we're coming into the Henry Street on the right. Yeah, some of these might be Henry Street coming into Henry Street. And, and this picture is in the so the, the So this f picture of Lord Goranga, Lord Chaitanya, is in the museum. And then on the left, there's Bhagawat speaking to a crowd of listeners. Actually, that's how we used to do the walking Harinam. Then after you get a crowd, then you would give a lecture for five minutes or some quick lecture. And if the Vaikuntha players were there, they would do a short skit like um, the wrong bank account, scholar in the boatman, moon landing, Dracula. The age of Kali. Yeah. There's the, there he is, Bhagawat. That's also in the museum. This That's sign the is, all, oh, this is the other side of that same picture, okay. In Prabhupada's room, yeah. Yeah, in the, yeah. Where is that? Oh, in front of oh, okay. Push your cracker. You say where it was from, I can't. 
This is um, the fountain at the Fifth Avenue and 59th Street, the Plaza Hotel. The um, Rathi Archer used to begin from here. It's the southeast entrance to Central Park. Yeah. Rathi Archer began there when Srila Prabhupada came to the first one, 1976, yeah. Up until maybe, and up until maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago, but then the city has cut it down and we're trying to get it back. The Kushakrata is on the top left. Subal is underneath him. Kanchambala, I don't know if you can see the pointer. Yeah, there's the pointer right there. And Saradia. Where? The one in the middle. Middle here. Ilavati. Ilavati. Yeah. Kanchambala. Oh, this one, Indumati, right? There's a 61 Second Avenue. 26? Oh, 26. Pictures okay. in front of 26. Brahmananda and all these, we could name them, but I think we'll go on, move on that. Hmm? And there, there they are, are Radha Krishna, who are on the altar right now. Same Radha Krishna. They, they were the first Radha Krishna deities to be worshipped in ISKCON, and now they're here. Okay, Henry Street period BTG photos. So again, some of them might be mixed up a little, but there's our... Great Kirtan leader Bharadwaj, Rupanuga behind him. He was the president of the New York Temple for a while. And Rukmini, Bharadwaj's wife, is on the left side there. You can see her. No, it doesn't work. Okay. That's Rumi, Rukmini there. Now, yes, Bharadwaj. On the left, you see. Radha Damodar, Vishnu John Maharaj came to New York a couple of times, brought Radha Damodar. So this is one of the times he would take them on a palanquin in the streets of New York City and set up a festival. That's the Empire State Building. Oh, Empire State Building, right. He knew where to chant. <laughs> Empire State Building. There's our Yogeshwara Prabhu. A Tindria on the right. There's a pointer is not working. That's Navadweep. Yeah, that's Navadweep up on the left, top left. No. That's Kanka on the bottom right. And is that Vishnu John chanting there? Yes. That is Vishnu John Maharaj chanting. Behind him is Dira, Dira Govinda or just Dira? Diradas. Jadarani on the steps of the Henry Street Temple, distributing a Krishna book. Those little Krishna books, they came in a trilogy, soft-bound little Krishna books. There were three of them in a box, a beautiful cardboard box. This is in front of Henry Street also. You see all kinds of, uh, this is Vaidhi Bhakti, I think it's her name on the left, Vidhi Bhakti. Sunita next to her, Ragatmika next to her. In front of her is Jita, Jita Mitra. And I see Mandaleshwar's wife there and Yoga Maya. Now this person here, the devotee, male devotee standing with his hands raised. This is Indra Pramad. And he was the graphic designer for the Back to Godhead magazine at that time. So he was the one putting all of these photos. Most of the BTGs at that time had pictures of Henry Street and, and uh, Harinam in New York because there weren't so many, as many temples around at that time with so many devotees. So 
That's why this, there are so many of these photos. And not so many photographers. And not so many photographers. Bar, probably it was Bargava. Bargava taking the pictures, or Morley, yeah. Now, you see, standing behind Indra Pramod is Dravida Das. Before he shaved his head. Yeah, I'm trying to get it. It was working before. Is it there now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, there it is. Okay, now it's there. But it's working with, yeah, it's working with this one too. Okay, there's Dravida. Next to him on the right is Jai Dwight Swami again. Now, this is a great photo. Harinam down New York streets. We got Bali Mardan on the front right. Bharadraj on his left. Mandaleshwar behind him. Mandaleshwar's wife behind, what was her name? Bimala. Bimala behind him. And what is this devotee's name? I forgot. He was uh, with the road show for a while. Anyway. I see Pipolai. Pipolai worked in the press. He was a Spanish devotee. That's him right there. While, while we're going through, we can also remember these devotees. Vimala has departed us uh, some years back, uh, quite some time. Uh, she was living in Alachua and then passed away there amongst the devotees. Uh, Pipolai is also no longer with us. Uh, I'm not sure the, all the circumstances there, but... I have a list of all departed devotees. We'll, we'll remember them. This is uh, Nanda Kishore on the right speaking. He was a very great Kirtan leader, Murdanga player, but also Vaikuntha players. More than that? Okay. He was the initiator of the New York Luglus, Nanda Kishore. Uh, no, well, uh, and then in 1971, when Srila Prabhupada first came to Brooklyn, Nandi Kishore asked Srila Prabhupada, what happens when someone takes a, a Simply Wonderful? That was him. And Prabhupada said, oh, then they become Simply Wonderful. You are Simply Wonderful, and your, Krish your Prashadam is Simply Wonderful, and your Krishna is Simply Wonderful. And then... Devotee said, and you are simply wonderful, Srila Prabhupada, and everybody exploded. But he was also, I don't know if he made the recipe. Yes. Did he? The original, the original recipe for, we called them lug, Luglus, but that's not actually the proper name. It's our, it's an name. That's our ISKCON name. These, they were originally balls of fried chickpea little fried chickpea balls called bundi, but he had his own recipe, which was boiled date syrup filled with all kinds of nuts and figs and apricots and raisins and cardamom and other stuff like that. And the Sankirtan devotees that would go out during the day, whoever was the best distributor would come back in the evening Toshan Krishna was in charge and some Brahmapad Maharaj. They would get the prize luglu, as big as your fist. No, no, bigger than a fist. Bigger than Softball a fist. Size. Softball size, okay. <laughs> then we would, uh, but for distribution, we would package them. For, I think we started off as balls, but it took too much time. Then we put them in cookie sheets, cool it off, you cut in squares, package them, and we would go on the subways in New York City all day long, devotees would go on the subways making announcements, and nowadays you hear, you know, people on the trains making announcements trying to collect money, but we would do that. We're the original fundraisers, New York subway fundraisers, and we would distribute books and lug loose. We started, this was around the time of the uh, Bangladesh War, and uh, the Bangladesh relief. So we started off <laughs> on the subway saying, oh, we're helping feed people in Bangladesh and we're saving people and so on. And uh, Srila Prabhupada heard about this, what we were saying. And he wrote to Rupanuga, maybe, maybe Rupanuga mentioned something, I don't know. But anyway, he wrote to Rupanuga, no, if you, if you ask for 
Bangladesh, you've got to send it to, uh, to Mayapur. So we changed our tune because we needed the money for our, you know, developing ISKCON. And what we found was that it really didn't matter what we said. As long as we were enthusiastic and loud voiced, and, uh, and, and so some of us who had loud voices did well. And uh, we would say, we are here to distribute love of God to everyone. And then people would give. I, 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 still, rem I still remember the announcement that I would make. I used to go along with, with Nurentra. Remember Nurentra? Yeah. So you'd be in the subway. They'd come to a stop. You only have about 15 seconds to make the announcement before the, the subway starts to run. And this just becomes overwhelming noise. So the car would stop, the doors would open, and the subway would say, the Hare Krishna movement is helping people around the world become free from the miseries of birth and death by spreading love for God. So whatever you can give, a dollar or even a penny will help tremendously. Thank you very much. So the Luglus, so Bhakti Vinod took over the making of the Luglus and became quite famous in making them in the trays. I had actually gone and purchased the machine for bagging them. And yeah, <laughs> and, and we designed a label. It was uh, orange and brown and anyway, it said L-U-G-L-U. -L -U. So that was Luglu. And then of course they argued, well, does it have sugar in it? Oh no, we use gore. It's very special, it's very sweet, and it's very wonderful. And there was a lot of issues with the devotees on the trains. They would get accosted, and, and once we just started distributing these Luglus, we became famous on the trains, and everybody loved us from the Luglus. And people were actually, Prasadam, and people were actually looking forward. I remember people telling me that this is the only meal I get when I, when I go into work, is getting this Luglu, this is, this is what I'm eating on my way, you know, into work. And so they were just like in the Gainesville prasadam distribution. Luglus became famous for, for that. So it's quite wonderful. Thank you. Even even the police officers oh, yeah. liked the Luglus. Yeah. Yeah. And the devotees. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is a famous devotee, Jaya Sachinandana, one of the. Um, probably the most well-known kirtan leader at that time. Um, no, this is Jai Sachinandana. No. That's Jai Sachinandana. That is definitely Jai Sachinandana. You'll see him in a couple other pictures too, but uh, January. Jaya Sachinandana. Not Sachinandana. Yeah, Jaya Sachinandana. It's in California somewhere. Yeah, he's in Santa Cruz, where I am. I met him. <laughs> Varanasi on the right. Ah, Jai Varanasi. We have to speak about Varanasi because as today, as was mentioned, some of you weren't here this morning, but uh, she was one of the uh, first uh, group of devotees to serve Radha Govinda, particularly in the sewing and making the outfits especially. And then she also became the head pujari, I believe, for some time. But uh, she's continued to do that. And this dress today was uh, arranged by Varanasi Mataji. Hare Krishna. Who is that to her on the left on the screen there? No, uh, I mean the lady in the front. Oh, I don't know. Maraji in the front. No, okay. Yeah, Chandra Shekhar is in the middle with his arms raised, and on here is Srila Das. Srila. Srila Das, right here. This is Kanka, who also lives in Santa Cruz, where I live. And Sharadia, huh? Sharadia. She That's Sharadia. Sharadia. Kanchambala, and right there. And Romapada, there on the right. And again, we used to go out early in the morning to Wall Street and chant, come back, and then go out all day long again.
you yeah, see the tape on his fingers. <laughs> right. This is on the left here. This devotee's name is Hari Basar. He wasn't in New York very long, but uh, he's... With Bhakti John, yeah, he's in uh, Berkeley now. And Daivi Shakti, who is now in Vrindavan, still distributing books. Still distributing books. She runs the gift shop or something. Yes. Yeah, the gift shop in Vrindavan. The bookshops. Or bookshops. Just one photo here. Pushkar playing the Murdunga on the right, and Jitamrita. And left, I see Brigupati, I think this is next to Pushkar. Mangalananda is there, and Janardhan, maybe? Maybe. Okay, we got a few famous people there. Jagajivan, playing the Murdunga here, he passed away some years ago. I don't remember this devotee's name. This is Srila Das back here, and this again is Dira Das. Dira Krishna, Dira Krishna Das. And the famous painter, probably some of his paintings are right in here, Vishnu Das. He's in Canada. In Canada now. Oh, this is at Macy's on 34th Street. We got another picture coming up of that later. I don't remember her name. This is. Uh, hmm? I didn't. What happened? Jimmy? Something, some problem with the Zoom. Uh, where is our tech? Oh, we lost the connection. Yeah. I see. Okay, we're back, but not on the... Yeah. Okay. There we go. Yeah, this uh, I don't know this ma this uh, Madhuji's name here. The this is Yogesh Chandra. Uh, there, standing in the middle, Jambavan's brother. And then on the right is uh, um, um, Sevananda's wife at the time. Uh, Can't remember her name. Now it's not changing on the computer. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we are. Bharadraj on the left, and then again, as in the other photo, Dravida Prabhu. Yeah. I don't know this lady's name. Jai Radha Govinda. Radha Govinda Dev. And uh, a nice photo from Harina, as you see, Times Square. I know where it is, but I can't remember the name. Oh, yeah, there's another photo of that, that here. There's Mangalananda here, the famous musician still out there chanting and writing songs about Krishna. This is Jai Sachinandana, Yamaraj, the back of Yamaraj's head. Now, Yamaraj is another devotee, one of the stalwarts of uh, uh, ISKCON New York and ISKCON Press, who continued his service uh, beginning here. He was the layout uh, person for, for, the, for all the for BTGs and books and so on went then to uh, follow the, the press to LA and then ended up in Alachua and passed away just, uh, what is it, two, three years ago now? Yeah. yeah. 
so we can remember Yamaraj. He was a very good photographer. So, uh, so as we uh, as we view these uh, these devotees and their their service, now 50 years practically, uh, many of them are still continuing their service, and some have proceeded to their next service. So we can honor and uh, and pray for their blessings. There's a back to God had shot lots of devotees here in the front. There's Mangal Ananda again right here in the back. And uh, what is his name? The artist? Hmm? Merladar. Merladar, the, another famous artist. And his name is Sundar Rupa. Sundar Rupa. Devamrita Brahmachari at the time. I don't remember. There's Santosh right here. I don't remember his name or his name. Jagannath Sutta on the far right. Okay, Henry Street. There's only a couple of pictures. There's really, I couldn't find hardly any photos of the inside of the temple with devotees doing things. And uh, I also could not find pictures of the Vaikuntha players, which is, was a Im very important part of the Henry Street Temple, the original Vaikuntha players, which uh, is a shame. You'll know this one. Uh, this is Sarup and Kanka. Uh, this was the, the marriage of Sarup and Kanka that hit uh, New York Magazine, I think it was. Uh, in 1971, it was quite, a, uh, quite an event. Uh, the celebrity Iskan Hare Krishna marriage. It was very, very popular. And uh, both of them are, are wonderful devotees uh, uh, in California. They have their own separate lives, but their Sarup went on to be the uh, prime mover of the mail order department. And so many people, this is a good hint for us all, what, uh, what can happen if you just follow up <laughs> with people who write to you and uh, communicate with you? So, so many people talk about how they, uh, became devotees because he used to uh, not only write to them, but he'd send them prashadam, he would uh, cultivate them through. This was the time of mail, not direct mail, postal mail, what we call snail mail now. But anyway, it was the only mail then. And uh, so it was very, very effective. So we can learn from that. That's the first, well, yes, that's this Vyasa san. Is this, yes, this is the one. Uh, you'll see some color pictures of it coming up, right? Yeah, there'd, yeah. Yeah, there'd be some color. But this is the this first is, one. This is the, uh, we, we used to call it psychedelic. Bhavananda. Uh, Bhavananda. Uh, you'll tell us about this. <laughs> Hare Krishna. That's, this is, uh, must be Janmashtami, I think. So, I was there, I don't remember it, but anyway, that's me on the left. But uh, Gopi Janabalaba is there uh, performing the, uh, the Abhishek of Radha and Krishna. And, oh, there's Toshan, yes, Toshan there in the, in the left. Do you see anybody else? Bhadra Sain. So this is, you can see, this is the altar of Radha Govinda in Henry Street. This must be probably 74. Four, I would think, some the, because you can see the way to tell the timing of these to some extent is by how far developed the uh, the altar was, and we'll see other pictures that we can see that. They're coming. The other photo. This is uh, this is the original Iskon Press on um, uh, Tiffany Boulevard. I actually have we'll have some photos of the current press, what building, what it looks like. But this is Jagannath Sutta at work at the press. Okay, Henry Street period, New York, Harinam. And uh, there we have Vishnu Das, the artist on the left front, Santosh on the right, there's Yamaraj again. And, and that, we're, that's at that fountain on Fifth uh, Sixth Avenue. Sixth Avenue, right. Yeah, in the 50s somewhere. 
this is in front of that cathedral again, right? Oh, 53rd, this one, right? 53rd and 5th, St. Thomas? St. Patrick. St. Patrick. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, St. Patrick. Yeah, Patrick. Yes, okay. West Side, yes. yeah. We used to, this was our major chanting spot. And here we have me. There's Jai Sachinandana. I don't remember this devotee. This is Sat, Satajit. There's Dravida. And next to him is Devamrita, or Brahmachari. And that's um, Sikhandini there. And next to her is Omkara. Omkara did? I'm not sure. She recently yeah. oh. So just again, some of these devotees, Saradiya uh, now and Omkara, these devotees have moved on to the Saint Kirtan in another realm. This was a picture that was used in Life magazine, I was told. And um, I believe that's me, unless somebody says otherwise. And we're doing Harinam. Do you know where this is? Can you recognize it? I think it's 34th Street, because we used to go. I remember this, this g gentleman here, the blind. Maybe. Could be a subway station. And then this old lady here that I'm chanting to. <laughs> Bali Mardan and um, Kanchambala, yes. No. Um, Rohini Kumar, Ekayani, Kanchambala and Bali Mardan. These two pictures are from the same same location. This is the same yeah. place, 53rd and 5th. Yes. Holy Communion. Yeah, you can't see what the name is here. Okay, we got all kinds of devotees here. I don't recognize. Sikandini, Bumi. Bumi and Sikandini became the leading distributors uh, of this time in Henry Street. They were a team. And they, uh, they were so enthusiastic for book distribution. And they're still very enthusiastic devotees, both on the West Coast. Yeah. She's also in Santa Cruz. Yeah, Santa Cruz. I think both of them are in Santa Cruz, right? Bumi is a further south in... Uh, Pacific, she's in Pacific. Yeah. Okay, there is a big Harinam party here. We got all kinds of devotees standing at front. Oh, it didn't change on the screen again? Did it lose the signal again? Okay, yeah, lots of devotees here. I, I, I mean, I don't know how much time we want to spend. I've got quite a few <laughs> you know, more to go new, through here. New faces you can... Yeah, new faces, okay. Well, this is Indri, Indriyesh on the far right. And there's Lokamangala behind me. Another, another departed soul, Lokamangala. I mean, some, these great souls who, who uh, astounded the ISKCON world. Uh, Lokamangala was uh, an amazing actor. Uh, he, he was, uh, I don't know, he, you, you'll see him. You, you, uh, most, how many of you have uh, watched the Ramayan? Uh, that's, that's, he played uh, uh, Ravan. Very well. <laughs> But we used to go out uh, in, I think it was about 74 or something, we used to, um, by that time, book distribution was really the, the focus, so the Hari Nam had reduced a little bit, but we, we still went out every day, and we used to focus on uh, doing plays on the, on the street, so we had Loka Mangala, and, um, and they're all gone, Not, uh, well, except for uh, Lohi Taksha, 
uh, Rasa Gya and uh, Nandikishore and uh, Prajapati. Um, yeah, so the only one left and me. Um, no, I mean, we're the only, Nandi Kishore and I are the only ones of those, that team are all, all have gone. Satarupa wasn't on that, uh, that Harinam team. And we would go out, we would, ha we had a, a little, uh, the forerunner of now the Yuga Dharma uh, basket thing that you use to carry everything. So we had a thing constructed of wood that we would uh, take down the subways and fold it up. It had a had some signboards and inside with our costumes and all of a sudden we'd be doing Harinam and then they would change into their uh, their dresses and then people would be watching and all of a sudden there's a play <laughs> and uh, I was more the director it was uh, Loka Mangala and uh, and uh, Rasa Gya were particularly the uh, the wrong bank account was because we used to play that on Wall Street you know near near that was that 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 big bull that is, yeah, so there's that. So, yeah, and Rockefeller Center, various places, so. No, it's okay. We just go back a little bit, right there. Oh. There are two kinds of, two, there were the skits that were kind of made up by Nandi Kishore and, and uh, Loka Mangala. But otherwise, they did the Leela plays, which are straight out of Krishna book and Srimad Bhagavatam, verbatim, practically. No change. Oh, and, and there was one play that Srila Prabhupada and Haya Griva made in like 1967 in San Francisco. It's called the Age of Kali play. Maybe you know this one. Yes? yes. For this is the age of Kali. I think, I, I think I've read this. Yes. When things will come under my sway and all your good qualities will fade away. Kali. This is not in that particular place, but uh, you can see here Santosh is in the middle and his wife, who's, you remember his name? Anyway. And uh, I think that looks like dear Krishna. And the oh, no, it's Radhabalaba. Sorry, Radhabalaba. So, there's, there's a and Rasagya is there. This is Rasagya. So this, this setup you can see with the harmonium. Now it's, you see, now they're sitting down. They're doing harmonium. There's a tambura. So we used to set this up by, I think it was in 75, we started setting this up every five days a week in Grand Armory Plaza. And this was a, uh, a special effort to present Krishna consciousness in a very uh, cultural uh, setting. Uh, and we'll talk about that later if we have some time. This I don't know. This is not. Uh, this is not where we set up. This is somewhere else, and this is a much bigger group. Yeah, the Vishnu Gada is right here, holding the conch shell in his Haribo. hand. Haribo. Haribo. Okay, next. Do you recognize? Oh, it didn't change on the screen. Oh, there it is. Okay. Do you recognize this location? Hmm. 
Anyway, lots of devotees here. Sikundini, I don't remember all the names. Loka Mangala in the back here. Omkara on the right. Ah, Vishnu John Swami leading a Harinam through the streets of Manhattan. This is, uh, uh, what's his name? S uh, starts with an S. Um, Sadachara, Sadachara, yes. Who is also, on, should be recognized as one of the uh, Pujaris of Shishi Radha Govinda for many, many years. And this devotee's name, I don't remember. Jagannath Sutta, there's Loka Mangala by Kunta Player Man right here. Big smile on his face. We joined at the same time, just about. Uh, there we have uh, Yogeshwara, Pipalai, Sumi devotees, Bali Mardan. This is currently Jambavan's wife. Well, what is it? Mamata. Yes. She's here. Is Mamata here? She was here this morning. And a shot of a Harinam van returning from Sankirtan. Could be Boston? Okay. Well, okay, I see Romapod and Jai Dwight. Uh, anyway, oh, whatever. As Boston. Okay. This is 42nd Street, isn't it? Boston and New York had a wonderful relationship. If you read about uh, the, uh, the ISKCON press, how it moved to, from Boston to New York, and this will tie into one of the features of, of Henry Street and, and uh, New York in general. Uh, Boston was known to be a little austere in the Prashad department. But uh, the devotees used to have to come down to New York for different purposes. And they report how the Advaita particularly would report back to the devotees in Boston how wonderful the Prashad was. Because Bhavananda he pulled out all the stops when it came to prashadam, especially when they were busy, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so the word got back and they, they all made the move. But yes, prashadam was a, was a wonderful feature of, uh, of Henry Street and, and all of New York. Yeah, we could talk about that. Prashadam. You said this is Boston? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Amazing person. Not the dancer. I mean the one next to him. This is a famous picture, but it, this was... Uh, He's still... I mean, this is... You, Jai Sachinandana levitating. By the power of Sunanda's Madunga. That's what's happening. Yeah. We better change that picture there. Now we'll go, we'll run through this without naming too many names, otherwise we'll, it'll be endless. But these are photos of Srila Prabhupada at Henry Street. Again, they're not the best, some of them are not the best quality, but uh, Sumahad, Anuttama, Baladev, or the Dibushan, Vidyabhushan. Yeah, we'll go with the names forever here with these, some of these photos. And, and this is this door behind Shilabra. That was his door. You see, so there's, there was two buildings joined together. So Shilabra Prabhupada had his own floor on the, uh, I can't remember, not 441, I think it is, uh, Henry Street. Yeah, we'll see pictures of the original, of not the, but the current buildings. Two entrances, one was Prabhupada and the other was the temple. No. Yeah, now here's the other Vyasa san, the next Vyasa san, the, the lotus flower Vyasa san. Right, he's wearing white. See some familiar faces there that we've seen before. What is this devotee's name? He's in LA. I forgot. Jivadara, Jivadara, Mangalananda, Sumahat, Bali Mardan. Hi, Prabhupada. 
this is a morning walk somewhere in Manhattan. Huh? Oh, it didn't change on the screen again. Yeah, let me get it back. Okay. Oh, there we go. You got the finger magic. This isn't in any chronological yeah, order. Yeah. Yeah, Trey Arishi on the right and Bali Mardan. There, okay. Well. Oh, it's there now. It's a delayed. Yeah, that's Kirti Raj. You can go back one. Now it's back on that one. He's, now he's watching the Vaikunta players. Yeah, yeah. And then there's another photo where he, everyone's laughing. We know that photo. Yeah, like yeah. In, the yeah in the rocking chair, yeah. Is it working? Oh, there it is. Okay, this is the ISKCON Press at 32 Tiffany Street or Boulevard, whatever. Place? Oh, place. And that's the next coming up. Yeah. That's at the press. There's Adwaita Das showing Prabhupada some... Uh, Aravinda on the right of Prabhupada. Yeah, Rupanuga on the far right. The temple has packed the hill, but still there's this alleyway between Srila Prabhupada and the side is what? <coughs> the deities, yeah, to make sure that Srila Prabhupada's vision, darshan of the deities is not uh, blocked. So when we were first joined, we were trained up. You got to keep your, you don't put your back to Srila Prabhupada, you don't put your back to the deities. Uh, but just this way, you keep this way and keep a, line, a, a space always open between Srila Prabhupada and the deities for his darshan. So that we're very careful about that. Yeah, these little rules and regulations were very important to us and sh should still be. Okay. Uh, I think it's getting a little quicker again. Whoa, back and forth. Okay, yeah. Uh, Gopal Krishna on the bending, offering prayers to Prabhupada. In the line, you have Bhakti Vinod, Anuttama, Jai Sachinandana. Prabhupada, Prabhupada lecturing, Bhagavatam lecture. Prabhupada leaving his quarters. This is Kirti Raj on the left here, Bali Mardan. 
This is another shot of Prabhupada watching the Vaikuntha players. Oh, it didn't come up yet. Oh. There it is. Okay, Bhumi on the front, Rupanuga, Brahmananda, Shrutakirti, Pankajanabha back here, and then Sikandini, Bali Mardan. Next. Prabhupada standing on his stairs with Bali Mardan Maharaj and devotees waiting outside. You can see the neighborhood. Here. Yes, this, so this is, this you can see what we were, where we were. This is uh, Henry Street neighborhood, uh, typical Brooklyn neighborhood. No but we were, <laughs> no parking there, that's true. Uh, that's why Tiffany Place was our garage as well. Uh, so, but we were not at all the common resident of this area. I don't know who this is sitting. Do you recognize? It's probably Bali, Bali Madonna. Bali? That's his typical hat. Typical hat, okay. <laughs> Prabhupada walking from there it is. There's this Vyasasan. Oh, it's not up yet? There it is. This Vyasasan was built just before devotees moved to Henry Street, uh, to 55th Street. And the contraption that's uh, on top. Who made that? Yeah, who made that? Do you know? I think it was Rukrama. Yeah, I know he was involved. But uh, that didn't last very long. It was it, this... Uh, so-called canopy, what, uh, anyway, it was not very stable. <laughs> and so I think we had it up for maybe one day. Uh, Hansa Rupa will remember. Oh, right, yeah. All right, next. Looks like, this looks like a morning walk in Central Park. Is that, Is that Central, or Prospect Park. Park? Yeah, Central Park would have been too far away. Oh, 72. Oh. Should we tell them who that is? <laughs> once, you, there, once you get the book, there's a book being, uh, has been written and it's being edited, will be published on the history of ISKCON New York. And there'll be a chapter, there's a little chapter which goes into the... Uh, background of the two devotees uh, in your foreground here, Bali Mardan, who's now in white, and next to her, next to him is uh, Taitreya. And there's a whole history of that, which we won't go into here, but uh, it's very interesting <laughs> and instructive. Prabhupada with a, a tray Rishi, and this is, there was another photo of the same, similar play, Jai Dwaita. Swami Atreya Rishi. Srila Prabhupada's first prominent Muslim. Yeah, from Iran, right? Yeah, from Tehran. Tehran, right. He was from Tehran. And he went on to, uh, to start a center in Tehran. And uh, until the revolution hit, it was really doing very well. Now we're back to the... Uh, yeah, we're back to the... This is the uh, 71 Vyasasan. Prabhupada chanting on beads for initiation. Uh, this, yeah, this was the Vyasa when I got here in 71. And uh, this is probably during that same time of our initiations. So Srila so Prabhupada, when he would do initiations, he would have chant on everybody's beads. So he would ask, give me 10 beads. And he would chant while the kirtan was going on or else while the uh, jagya was going on. So he would then, at the end of that, he would give the one bead to each devotee initiate. You received your beads from Srila Prabhupada, I think. No, you didn't? Oh. I was, he wasn't here when I was uh, here. They were actually lost in the mail. That's right. You must have got your beads. I did, but 
One time on St. Kirtan on the subways, because on the subways we'd have to refill. So uh, what, what would happen was that one devotee was assigned, those days there used to be lockers in the subway system. And now there's no lockers <laughs> anywhere in any transport system. Into, somebody put a bomb in one sometime. So uh, anyway, so we had a system where they would, uh, one devotee would deposit, uh, we had, how did we got the keys? I don't remember. Anyway, so I went to get my, my uh, fresh collection. I put my beads in an empty locker next, next to it just while I was uh, collecting. And when I went back to get them, they were gone. But yes, and oh, those beads, by the way, were not from India. In those days, we didn't have a lot of supply. On Ar Arundhati, you probably had the same situation. You'd have to go down to the bead place, down on uh, uh, 30, 30, 30th Street or someplace. I don't know, maybe we, you had your own supply. But we, would, we were sent down there. We'd get a bunch of beads, white, or uh, mine were white, just wooden beads, and we had to string them ourselves, and that's what we did. There were a couple of famous photos of Prabhupada, and I have them both here. So this is Prabhupada. Uh, these were both taken on Henry Street. Most of you have probably seen them online. And the story of how these were taken is going to be in the book. The book. Uh, Viprahita here passed away. Viprahita. Who's that devotee there? I forgot this. Mahananda. Mahananda, yes. Okay. Radha Balaba, and then Jadarani, Sikhandini, Radha Govinda. Oh. Yeah, there are going to be some pictures of Radha Govinda and Prabhupada. This is a very famous photograph Prabhupada watching the Vaikuntha players. What did he say, Vishnu Gudda? Well, he said something about, but he also said something about, about the plays. Yeah, he said the plays. He, afterwards, he commented how it's even better than reading the book, <laughs> going to the movie, right? Uh, so this is, uh, he, he really, really, into, this was the kidnapping of Rukmini. And uh, you, you should hear Rasa Gya's, uh, telling of her story about this. Go to the Prabhupada memories and hear her tell the story of how nervous she was uh, performing this uh, in front of Srila Prabhupada. But how at the end, it, it just, anyway, it's a wonderful story. Go and check it out. Oh, and we have here front and center, His Grace Gorhari Das. And in the list that I prepared a few days ago of those departed, his name was not there. But now it is. He passed uh, just a few days, maybe a week ago, about a week ago, in Alachua, surrounded by devotees, and Srila Prabhupada. And so that's, the chair that sitting on is that's the in the museum. So. Can you, do devotees get a chance if they like to put a touch of hand? Yes, we should have a, a plan for today to, for devotees to uh, have a little time in the museum. We'll work at that. Okay, now, now we have a, a few pictures of Prabhupada again with Radha Govinda in the background. Uh, so here's one. And you can see the altar here. These very un, un, uh, unusual, what do we call them, over the deities' heads. Um, Chatri. So Chatri. Yeah. And if you saw on 61 Second Avenue, remember those pictures on 61 Second Avenue of the altar? There were big Jagannath deities. So what happened to the big Jagannath deities that were there in 61 Second Avenue and they're not here? They went somewhere. I'm trying. To, I think they they went into the ocean. Yeah. So, uh, so when Srila Prabhupada first came to Henry Street 71, you know, in those days. In the temple, uh, we didn't carry on conversations in the temple. It was like nobody did that. 
Nobody talked to other people. It was just you chanted and you, uh, you give class, but that was it. So when Srila Prabhupada first came to the temple in Henry Street, 71, he offered his, his obeisances. And then Bhavananda was the temple president, was right by him. And they started to have a talk, and whisper, whisper, talk, talk. That was going on for a few minutes. And, and all the devotees are listening that we couldn't hear. So everybody wanted to know what was going on. What, was, what were they talking about? So uh, one thing was, Srila Prabhupada was asking, where's the Jagannath deities that were there in 661 Second Avenue? And another one, which I remember, which nobody else does, so I can't say it's 100% correct, but <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada, what we heard was, Srila Prabhupada said, Radha Krishna are looking tired. Anybody remember this? Nobody remembers this. Because at that time, in California, in Los Angeles, devotees were going out all night on Hollywood Boulevard to do kirtan. And Bhavananda, who was the temple president, came from Los Angeles to, to New York, and he just in, started to introduce that in, at Henry Street. Devotees would go out all night to, to Broadway and then come back early in the morning. And before, so before they'd go to sleep, uh, he wanted them to go to Mangalarti, so he moved up the Mangalarti time from 4.30 to 4 o'clock. So then the deities had to get up at 3.15 to wake up. So Prabhupada says, oh, the deities are looking tired. Hare <laughs> Krishna. Okay, it's not up there yet. So the, the, the Jagannath deities were put in the ocean. Oh, in the ocean. Yeah, they oh, they cracked, cracked yes. Yeah. Still hasn't changed. He said, the internet connection is unstable. But of course, ah, well, you got that one. You can also see behind the deities is this beautiful folding painting. I, if anyone watching this can tell us who made the backdrops for Radha Govinda, that would be wonderful. This is special, it's, it's, it's hard to see here, but Radha Damodar are there on the altar to, the, uh, to uh, uh, Radha's left. Where is Jagannath? Good question. This is when Vishnu Jan Swami came in the summertime of 72. So they had, you know, the Snani Atra before a Rati Atra in 1972 in Prospect Park. And so they were in hiding or in you know, seclusion at that time. And that's when he put the Radhadamadra on the altar. And... and uh, you know, Radha Damodar, uh, there's, there's the Radha Damodar, of course, now in Gita Nagari. But Gita Nagari used to be the New York farm. So there's a whole story about how that happened. If you want to tell it, you can. You know the story? Well, how Gita Nagari became separate? How it became separate, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so, so... Uh, So, uh, during 1975, uh, ISKCON, New York, they, we purchased the big uh, 50 Street building. And how, what was the, the uh, mortgage on that building? It's like a million dollar mortgage, something, a gigantic mortgage. And so, you know, Prabhupada had warned, he said, oh, you can purchase the building, but make sure it's not, you're going to have to spend all your time collecting the money. So like the first three months, it was getting really tough to pay the mortgage. So then Srila Prabhupada made the arrangement to bring the Radha Damodar buses centered in New York. So for about a year, Radha Damodar was centered in New York. They had a warehouse down where they fixed the buses. So that went on for a year. And the Radha Damodar Lakshmi came through New York and helped to pay for the New York mortgage. You know this? 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, you were gone though. Yeah, yeah. So they paid the New York mortgage for about a year. So then after Srila Prabhupada left, the, Dhamma, the devotees in Radhadamara said, well, you know, we gave all this money to, to New York. We want it back. So that's how Radhadamara went to Gitanari because New York gave the, the farm, which was New York's farm, to the Radhadamara party. Then it became based there. Prabhupada on the steps of his quarters. This is uh, the entrance of the main entrance of the Henry Street Temple. Prabhupada walking in because the route he would walk down after giving a class or coming in the door or whatever, he would come down the hall towards us make a right-hand turn, and there was an en another entrance to his quarters rather than go outside and something like that. Here we have a devotee here we never saw yet is next to Prabhupada kneeling down is Parikshit. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Parikshit is uh, another great artist. These are going to be a few kirtan photos. Vishnu John Swami, Shruti Kirti, Gopal Krishna Maharaj, Bali Mardan, Loka Mangala, over there behind them. There we have Pancharatna, finally. Right there. Yeah. Prabhupada, there's another view of Prabhupada watching the Vaikuntha players in his rocking chair. Now, Prabhupada did a lot of translating while he was in New York, so there's a couple of famous photos. The desk there. The desk that he's translating on there is in the museum. Say, I'm not sure if it's the same dictaphone, but the desk, the little uh, white thing, uh, cupboard, uh, uh, shelf is, and the, the seat that Srila Prabhupada is sitting on is all there in the museum. <laughs> not sure. <laughs> the light, the lamp. Ah, yeah, nice photo here coming up. Prabhupada across the street from the temple, standing in front of this little grocery store on the corner on Henry Street. That's across the street from the Henry Street Temple. A couple of photos, Prabhupada giving class from his Vyasa San. Another. Another, uh, Rajendra Nandana, there's uh, Swarup, Rabindra Swarup. This, I couldn't find a good quality photo, but this was an image used. So, well, the Vyasa San that was in 1971, uh, when it was replaced by the Lotus Vyasa San, which is now in, in uh, Gidanagari, um, that previous Vizyasam was put in Prabhupada's own quarters in his darshan room. He had a room that was the same size as the temple because these were like mirror uh, buildings. Uh, so they had uh, in some ways. Uh, so there was another room that was uh, almost the same size or it was the same size as our temple room and that became Srila Prabhupada's darshan room and this was uh, placed in the, in the one side of it. Okay, we got another collection. <laughs> Prabhupada at JFK Airport. This is an early one. Logan? Logan Airport, 1969. Boston. So this is Boston. This is New York. 
Okay, this is New York. Yeah, I saw all the devotees there from New York. Okay. That's a famous one. This is a... F Prabhupada being interviewed by the local television news stations. Nittai on Prabhupada's left, he was a Sanskrit scholar. That was also uh, at the airport. Okay. Yeah. These could be the flower petals that we heard about this morning. Sunita and Omkara with the flower petals. I think it's Parikshit's son, maybe, maybe. A lot of devotees. This is Prabhupada uh, arriving and going to the temple. Yeah, let me, uh, this is uh, Henry Street today or within the last few oh. years or whatever just what the building looks like uh, so we can see the main entrance to the temple is on the left and Prabhupada's quarters are on the right well actually this building here to the left is new uh, this this here this is this was a open space this is 439 Henry Street and this has been uh, in the open space that was to our, we had like a, some trees and you know, some yard that circled around the back. Um, this has uh, been added on. The uh, Satyaraj in his uh, research uh, found that this building was uh, once a quite uh, prominent uh, personality. I think it was Nostrand, I think, or some, a Brooklyn personality built this building. Uh, in the 1860 or something like that. So it was an old famous building and then it became used by the nuns and then we used it. So this, this one here is new. This is, this is new. This is 439. So here you see both buildings. You see 439 here and 441, I believe it was. This is, so this floor here you can see this is the entrance to 439. The temple room uh, would have these, these two rooms. The, Prabhupada's uh, Vyasasam would be right behind this wall here. There was a, uh, a staircase going down into the basement down here. So there's another way to get down into the St. Kirtan. Then up on this floor was the offices and uh, uh, gift shop and things like that. And then the Brahmachari quarters here. Here was Prabhupada's room. Then this was the on this side was the, uh, what we call the theater or gallery, and then the ladies were living here, and there was some Grihasta quarters up, up here. So that's, and the, and, the and the basement here was also used for the kitchen and spiritual sky, and it's quite, a, a, you know, quite an establishment. If you, if you consider going from uh, uh, 26 Second Avenue, and uh, then to 61 Second Avenue, which is very tight, and then here, ooh, but it filled up so quickly. Oh, this, this is a good picture because this is before they added. It moved there in 1970, uh, December of 1970. 97, 1970, we moved there in December of 1970 from 61 Second Avenue. And we moved out in around October of 75. So here you can see how this is without that building in the corner. Uh, so this, this was an open, open area and uh, 
this, this would be the temple here. And there was a garden, sort of, not much of a garden here, but in the back was uh, more, more of a garden. So this is, this is more of a, uh, from the time. Okay. And, yeah, here we have 32. Tiffany Place <laughs> doesn't look. <laughs> this is you know, <laughs> Mamata. Can you imagine? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> it looks like people live there. You know, there were people living. There were there were living entities. There were a lot of living entities in that uh, area, but they didn't have four, two legs, and and two arms. Uh, they had. Uh, they were another <laughs> variety. <laughs> Anyway. One more shot, please. Ah. Tiffany. Tiffany Place. Who would have thunk? Look at that. It is, uh, this is not the Tiffany Place we knew. There was a story that I, Anutam is not here, but he told me a story yesterday, which I'll try to, to relay as a, as a fitting finale. Um, so one day, uh, the people who were supposed to be watching in the loft, they didn't uh, do their job. So some people were able to break in from the bottom, uh, like not alley, but right in the back, and they went up. And there was a door between Jayadrata's uh, little office that went out to the, some, some sort of fire escape. And they got in there, they, ch they chipped away you know, the bricks, and they were able to get in. And what did they steal? They stole the entire archives of all ISKCON's photographs. So Anutama and I think it was Bhargava discovered them. They were like, oh no, this is everything. So they, they went through all the dumpsters all around because they thought, they're not gonna, the thieves are not going to want anything for this, right? So they, they went to all the dumpsters and they didn't find anything. I so, said, okay, well, this was just today, so maybe we'll, we'll go to where the, dumps, where the dump trucks go. And uh, so they went to some, slow, some part in Brooklyn or someplace where all the dump trucks had dumped, and they started sifting. Through. They asked, well, where did this dump truck go from this place? And they said, and they started sifting through the, what did he, he described it? It was because there was a Puerto Rican neighborhood, so it was basically all rice and beans <laughs> and other stuff. Anyway, so they sifted through and they tried to find and then it came back and then it's not there. And uh, somebody came around and said, you know, I, you know, I know this neighborhood pretty well. Let me see if I can help you. I know how many people heard that kind of story. And then, so a couple of days later he comes up, yeah, hey, I found the guy. Yeah, he's got it. Just, he just wants $300. $300. So pretty sure that there was already a plan here. Anyway, they got it back, and we still have those things. So that was, that was the kind of neighborhood that Tiffany Place was, not what you saw before. Radha Govinda! Haribo. Jai. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Well, thank you very, very much, Sunanda. That was such a wonderful service. We're, we are going to make this available, right, online, and uh, we're going to have a, a program of identification, right? We'll put it, th th we have a, uh, a Facebook page, right? Uh, Henry Street Memories. Henry Street Memories. So anyone who wants to go to join our Facebook group, Henry Street Memories, and you can help us identify all the people in these photographs. Yes, Srimati, you Uh, we don't, do we have a microphone to?
Uh, Park Avenue, yeah. Yeah, no, the, the Henry Street Temple had such a variety uh, of devotional service. You could practically plug in anywhere. If you were an actor, okay, join the Vaikuntha players. You were a musician, okay, take, take part in recording with Mangalananda was doing his recording in the road show. You were a cook, you were a seamstress, you were a typesetter, <laughs> you were a computer guy, you were a photographer, you were an artist. Everyone had service. Mechanics too, yeah, yeah. Everyone. So thank you, everyone. We're, as you can see, uh, uh, Arindati, did you want to, sh you said you had something you'd like to share. You'd like to do that now? We have a few more minutes. Uh, you can see behind me, they're setting up this stage. To, it starts at three. Oh. Okay, because I was told two o'clock, but now it's three o'clock. Okay, well that makes more sense. Okay, so we have a little more time to hear, hear uh, from, from others. Um, and I see, and, and this is, we can extend this into anyone who had experiences with Radha Govinda over the years. And maybe Ram Roy, you'd like to share some things. From, that doesn't matter, 55th Street. Yeah, 55th Street. Rukmini was supposed to come. Uh, hasn't made it. I know she didn't uh, make it here. She said she was going to try to come. Let me see if any of our online persons and uh, so why, why don't you, can, can, can you just keep, oh. Hare Krishna. Anywhere, I just I just need need a chair. <laughs> Where's a good place? Any place that you remember, Krishna in New York. Okay. Ali ball. Namo Vishnu Vidaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharane Nivishesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Desha Tarane Dai Prabhupada So uh, um, I think I, I've spanned all the temples in New York at different times living there or coming through and uh, I first saw Srila Prabhupada, Tompkins Square Park, 1966, because I grew up in the Bronx, and uh, went down to Manhattan, and somebody brought me to Tompkins Square Park and said, come here, I want to show you something. And they brought me over to Prabhupada, who was chanting the Maha Mantra, and actually explaining what the Maha Mantra meant. So that was my first um, time, you know, hearing the mantra and, and um, I didn't join. I, like so many devotees who were really attracted to Srila Prabhupada immediately, I wasn't one of them, but um, I did chant along and um, walked away and didn't give it another thought. But then um, eventually, Krishna's plan, as soon as I turned, that was when I was 17, and as soon as I turned 18, I wanted to leave home, which was the Bronx, and um, got an opportunity to move um, with a friend on East 6th Street, so that was, you know, right near the temple, the first temple, Matchless Gifts. So I was constantly passing by the temple and peeping my head in, 
And um, at that time, I never like totally went in, but I was like looking at, watching the devotees coming out and thinking it looked pretty weird, you know? The uh, brahmacharis <laughs> with the robes and, you know, the shaved heads. It was very, extremely unusual at that time. We're, you know, it isn't now, but it was then. So it was very, very strange, like aliens or something to me. Um, but anyhow, as Krishna would have it, uh, me and my friend, Rana Deer, we, we ran into Kirtanananda, Hayagriva, and Umapati. And um, Rana Deer knew Kirtanananda from Bellevue Hospital. They had met in the, um, that hospital, <laughs> which is a, a cra uh, it was a hospital for crazy people at that time, actually. Um, I guess they were both a little crazy in their own way, but anyhow, they got out of the hospital pretty quickly. And so we ran into them, and they started preaching to us um, about Krishna, you know, and that's really how I got more into it, you know. And um, when I, I won't go through all the details. There's a lot, a lot of details leading up to me joining, but um, when I officially joined, I joined at 61 Second Avenue, that was uh, autumn, 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 winter of uh, 1968. I guess it was winter, or just before the winter, yeah. And um, Brahmananda was the president, and um, he was very dear. Everybody loved Brahmananda, so um, he was, you know, just had a great heart and. Um, you know, was very encouraging. And he suggested that I go to Boston because Boston was the only Brahmacharini temple around at the time. So I did end up moving up to Boston with Sathrup Yadarani and a few of the artists. And, um, I said, uh, yeah, my main service started there, which was typing Srila Prabhupada's books. Because um, when I joined Satsvarup, he asked me, what do you know how to do? And he started kind of going through a list. Do you know how to cook? No. Do you know how to paint? No. Whatever he named, I didn't know how to do. And then finally he said, do you know how to type? And I said, yes. So that was Krishna's mercy. I had learned typing um, in school, high school. And so I immediately started typing Srila Prabhupada's books and transcribing as well. And that was my service, like all along while Srila Prabhupada was, was here on the planet. Um, so anyhow, I moved around quite a bit. Um, Srila Prabhupada, another long story about my marriage, which I won't get into right now, but um, he, ar he arranged my marriage with Pradyumna, and he said, um, both of you are working on the books, so that will bring you together in Krishna's service if, if you want to get married, you know. And we, we had both said no to marriage previously to other people, but we both said yes at that time, so I guess it was meant to be. Um, so I, I moved to Columbus, and um, then Srila Prabhupada is kind of, Press was they got the building in Boston, the the first um, Iskon Press building before New York. So um, we went there, there for some time. I I had my child there, Aniruda, and then um, Sheila Prabhupada said move to Henry Street. They got the Henry Street Temple, so we immediately, you know, all the press devotees then moved to Henry Street. So. Um, that was around December 1970, I think, something like that. Um, so, I, honestly, I don't have too many memories about Henry Street. Um, I have one really good memory and one really bad memory <laughs> that's uh, pretty strong in my mind, you know. But the good memory 
was um, Srila Prabhupada came to the temple. Well, do you remember when that was? Anyone when the Prabhupada came the first time to Henry Street Temple? Because I don't remember the month. Okay. So he came then, and um, so I, I presented Aniruddha. We were in a darshan with Prabhupada, some big room. And um, I brought my son, Aniruddha, who was almost, yeah, he was just a year old. I put him in front of Srila Prabhupada to kind of offer him to Prabhupada. And um, Srila Prabhupada, took two fingers and he circled them around Aniruddha's face and he said, Aniruddha is as beautiful as Aniruddha himself. <laughs> and um, so then I went away and I left Aniruddha there with Prabhupada and um, as soon as Prabhupada said that, Aniruddha started crying hysterically. And uh, Prabhupada was pretty surprised, you know, to, and he, he said to me, does he always do that? And I said, no, Srila Prabhupada, he's never done that. So uh, that, that was the, the very sweet pastime that I remember from Henry Street. And um, the not so sweet one was, um, we, were, we were asked to leave Henry Street and go to India in, um, in August the next month, August 1971. So we all took off and we were in London and I didn't actually make it to India, but um, I came back and stayed at, at um, the temple for a while. Maybe it was January, February 1972, something like that. I, I guess it was before the deities were installed. That They were installed in March? Oh. Um, so they're not so sweet. <laughs> I don't know what, what the building was. Was it like a nursing home or something before? Okay. Well, there was a staph infection going around. <laughs> so that was, I, I moved in for a week or two and I got a really, really bad staph infection on my face. My whole face blew up. <laughs> So that, a lot of devotees got it. May, I, I don't know if you were there then, Mamata. Um, so that was the not so sweet. Um, anyhow, um, I, I can't like think of too much New York. You know, I was just typing Prabhupada's books and I was take care, taking care of Aniruddha at that time. Um, and in Boston, I actually, me and Prajumna, we, we had our own room. <laughs> but um, once we got to New York, you know, I had to live with my kid and the, with all the Brahmacharinis and all the women, you know, it was pretty crowded. And so, trying to think if there's anything else. Can't think of anything from Henry Street. And 55th Street, I just remember being there, you know, for the first Ratha Yatra in 1976. And uh, Prabhupada. And um, that's about, that's all that's kind of like standing out in my mind because unfortunately I don't have a great memory. <laughs> At the moment, maybe something else will come through, but uh, that's it for now. <laughs> so I remember Pradyumya also in 1971 because uh, I went to him after my initiation. And so I, because he was, I think he was, the, I'm pretty sure he was in, engaged in selecting the names. Uh, and uh, our, our day of initiation, this was... Uh, July of 1971, and Srila Prabhupada had been in India, and he had actually stopped initiating for, for some seven months or something like that. Because I know when I joined the temple first in 1970, he wasn't in, in, initiating. There was like a backlog. So when he got back to uh, the U.S. and uh, he started initiating first in Boston and then came to New York, uh, it was six days, I think, of initiations. And 
as I'm pretty sure that Perdumia was, I don't know if he had done it before, the selecting of names, but he did it this time. And on, on our day, he decided to do numbers. So there was uh, Ashtarath, there was Saptarath, there was uh, Navarath, and then me, Pancharatna. And uh, there was also Mahamaya that evoked a lot of laughter. Uh, so Srila Prabhupada, in, in, when he initially said, Pancharatna Das, five jewels. And that was it. And I just said, well, what does that mean? <laughs> so I remember going to Pradyumya, because, you know, he's the Sanskrit. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's the Sanskrit person, and he's... Uh, uh, he, he selected it. So what does it mean? And all I remember him saying was, ah, some king. <laughs> so you know, I never, it took a long time. I'm still not quite sure, other than being five jewels, what it uh, refers to. So that was my first experience with Perdumia. Uh Recently I asked him, you know, what, what did you use to select names? Did you have a Ouija board or something like that? And and uh, he said, well, something. <laughs> so, I, uh, there are a few devotees who are online, but um, I've asked, and uh, I'm going to just uh, see Tarak. I was wondering if he would like to speak something. Yeah, I turned off the screen temporarily so that it didn't distract on, the, uh, on here. But uh, let's see. So, Tarek, okay, now let's see if we can get you, because uh, I hear your, I hear sound, I mean, I see that the, you're speaking, but I'm not getting it, so I'm going to try to, uh, to get you on volume here, let's see, one second. We don't have our technical person here. Is Jimmy here? No. Oh, he is. Okay. See if you can get sound from Zoom. I think Tarika wants to speak. Okay, and plug it back in. The uh, I, I I unplug the. Uh. Uh, excuse me. He, he, I mean, I see his microphone moving. Oh, now he's gone. Okay. All right. Well, anyway. Yeah, this has been quite a long session. <laughs> so I can imagine some of the Zoom participants are going to uh, join us or see it later on. So I think we're going to actually wind, unless, Ram Roy, would you like to talk about 55th Street in Radha Govinda? Well, I, I left 55th Street in 1976, so I didn't have a lot of memory, uh, except, you know, moving in was a... We were just reflecting this morning, Vishnu Gada and I, <clears throat> about what we had to do to, to bring the kitchen, because it was a wonder... I mean, the 55th Street building, again, was an institutional building. It was a... Uh, uh, it was... Excuse me? Yeah, it, it was a nursing home. What, did it have a name? Carmelite. Carmelite, yes, Carmelite, yeah. It was a Catholic, uh, it was owned by the Catholic Church. And um, in fact, that's one of the reasons we were able to get it, because they, they gave us a mortgage, which was quite unusual. But um, anyway, uh, it, was, it had a full kitchen, dining area. There was, of course, all the residences. It was a theater. Uh, really, really fantastic facility. But the kitchen was, you know, it was not a devotee kitchen. <laughs> so we spent weeks scrubbing that kitchen down. We, every single particle, taking it all apart, getting into every nook and cranny and scrubbing and polishing and scraping because those their standards were not ours. And of course, 
we wanted to purify it, uh, I think we probably brought in some cow dung and <laughs> spread it all over. So we were just reminiscing about that. But anyway, moving into 55th Street was a great challenge. Uh, getting in there took a lot of work. And uh, we weren't quite ready, but uh, Bhavananda took, he, he was visiting and from, from India. And he kind of took charge and said, we're moving today. And we'll, uh, that story will come in the, in the book. And, and, and we'll tell more of those stories when we have our final reunion, uh, a 55th Street-focused uh, reunion uh, on, in somewhere around October, uh, which will be around the same time. 50, uh, not, not 50 years ago, but uh, 40, 47. So, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank people online. I'd like to thank everybody who's spoken, and I hope you've enjoyed this session. And a few, let's see, it's about 45 minutes. We'll take a break now and let them finish their, all their setup. Of the, you can see they're, they're getting ready for a, a really wonderful kirtan. And Hans Rupa Bru is here. He can tell some stories. The kirtan, that's what I was just saying, yeah. Yeah. But meanwhile, perhaps there's some service. Do you need anybody to... Has everybody had the opportunity to speak? Or... Yeah, all the uh, Prabhupada disciples, and they've all, all spoken. Yes. He's going to try to get on? Okay, let's see if he's... Yes, let's Corbis see if he got, got here. Oh, he is. Apurva got on. Okay, so we have some time. We're going to hear from Apurva, but we need Jimmy to get us... Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, to bring him on. You can see Apurva here. Okay, so let's hope this works. Move all... Okay. Apurva, you have to unmute yourself. Start your video. Can we hear you? Yeah, he's doing that. What's that? Your audio seems to be not connected, Apurva. Or video or anything. At least we can see you. Come on. Start it up. There we go, somebody, let's see, Purva, we just see your name. Can you start your video? Not yet. Can you start your video, Purva? Do you hear us? Mm -hmm. Those of you who don't know, Purva is uh, one of the early Henry Street devotees, uh, known especially in, uh, as he, his service expanded, he especially expanded into the realm of cooking for Krishna. In fact, I think his, uh, his email address is cooking for Krishna. Is that right? Somebody says. Anyhow, um, yeah, he's been a cook for Krishna that has excelled, especially in the arena of the feasts. And it would be wrong to, to not mention the feasts of Henry Street. Now, Sunanda is also a, a feast cooker. Can you describe what a, a typical Henry Street Sunday feast was like? Well, from my recollection, um, they were extremely opulent feasts. And um, many temples that I've been to nowadays, you know, some serve maybe a sabji rice and poppers or puris and some sweet. But these feasts consisted of sometimes two and three Subjis, always using ghee, no oil, no soybean oil, no oil at all. It's always ghee. 
that was Prabhupada's instruction. Paneer, sour cream, and we would have rice. Almost every Sunday feast would have samosas, maybe, and uh, chutney and sweet rice and halava, ladus. It was just uh, an incredible array. And for the most part, Prabhupada had taught us that prasadam is our secret weapon. So that really brought a lot of people to Krishna consciousness. And there's stories like that of devotees who will tell you that they came to Krishna consciousness because of prasadam. And that's why we have restaurants. You know, we're not just trying to do a business with restaurants <clears throat> to make money. We're doing it to distribute <clears throat> spiritual food to awaken and purify and enlighten other souls and bring them to Krishna consciousness with prasadam. Um, so it was a very important part of Krishna consciousness in those days we described the love. We talked about the luglus earlier and how we used to distribute them on the subways. We became famous. Agni Prabhupada called us the kitchen religion. Kitchen religion. Um, so that's about uh, what I can say about prasadam, but there's, I'm sure there's somebody who could speak more on that. It was, definitely the Sunday feast was a major, major uh, effort on the whole, on the part of the whole temple because everyone was involved. As, he, as Sunanda mentioned, we made uh, samosas, we made pakoras, samosas, puris, ri plain rice, pushbana rice, chutney, two sabjis, halva, sweet rice, uh, and some sort of burfi or ladu. ladu. Uh, so it was, and, and a nectar drink, which was, uh, you know, yogurt mixed with strawberries or something. They were amazing, and uh, all glories to the cooks. Uh, let's, let's hear the history of cooks. We, have, we began, when I came, it was Bhadra, who was the head cook. Then I believe Mangalananda, or maybe was it uh, Rishi Kumar took over? I'm not sure. Mangalananda, he, he became the head, head of the kitchen. Uh, Hari Kesha was, uh, was there. Uh, I th at some point, Apoorva uh, took, took it on. Uh, I think Vishnu Gadad was also, I know he was always involved, he was very good at cooking. So we should make a roster of, of the Henry Street uh, Pujaris, the Henry Street cooks, all of these wonderful devotees. Well, it seems like uh, we're not getting a purva to hear him. I don't know what, no, can't see him, can't hear him. Anyway. Yeah, I, d I just want to mention the, uh, you know, for those who are just been in ISKCON or with Krishna consciousness for a while or are new, the, Prabhupada had created a formula, a spiritual formula for um, making devotees for attracting people to Krishna consciousness. So it was always kirtan, prasadam, and lectures, of course, the philosophy. So as I mentioned earlier, we would go out on Harinam eight to ten hours a day. If you can imagine doing that, eight to ten hours every day. You would join the temple, I mean, you know, Times are different now, but somebody became a devotee back in those days. They would be, to be a devotee, you would move into the temple. There were very few congregational members who lived outside and came to the temple. Uh, you would, to be a devotee, you would move in. That was the standard at that time. And you would go out on Harinam, at least in New York, we would do that, L.A. also. You'd go out on Harinam all day. You would sell Back to God in magazine, give invitation cards to people to come to the Sunday feast. The Sunday feast was the clincher 
that would make people become devotees. It wasn't just for the devotees, it was also for the devotees because devotees left, led a very austere life and ate very simply during the week. You know, somebody we were talking to you earlier today, we would roll out, there'd be a roll of wax paper that would be rolled out on the prashadam room floor. You'd sit on the floor, you'd get a little hot oatmeal or suji farina cereal and some chickpeas and ginger. And that was and a piece, a slice of orange, and that was your breakfast. Then, one slice of orange, yeah, one slice of orange, and then you'd have lunch would be dal and rice mainly, but uh, life was very austere. So the Sunday feast was for devotees, but <clears throat> you would on Harinam you would be inviting people back to the temple to hear about Krishna consciousness. And the mood, the whole environment was created, it was the spiritual world. You'd walk into that temple, there'd be this uproarious kirtan going on led by Bharadraj or, or uh, the Yogeshwara or somebody else, Agni Dave, didn't mention Agni Dave, he's not in any of the pictures, but Agni Dave, these kirtans that, you know, you just jump up to the ceiling in those kirtans, and then there would be a class, wonderful class, and then there'd be prashadam, this amazing feast, and you would get hooked. You'd get hooked into Krishna. Yeah, I got to come back for more. And we used to, guests would come. I remember very specifically, we used to see the guests that would come, they would sit down in the prashadam room just like we did on the floor, no tables, no chairs, everyone would sit on the floor, they would get prashadam, there was a room where they would serve the plates. And then devotees like Jaidwaita Maharaj, at the time Brahmachari, we would strategize, okay, you go sit with this person, and you go sit with that person, and you go sit with that person. And the whole purpose was to talk to that person and make them become a devotee. It wasn't just a social uh, get-together. It was an, an environment to make people devotees. Now, there weren't a lot of Indians at that time either, at least not in New York. There were some but not like nowadays, but um, it was mostly 95% Westerners talking to Westerners and making Westerners into devotees of Krishna. Um, so th that's what the mood was like, that's what the environment was like. And um, I always felt that that formula, as I mentioned earlier, which Prabhupada started, the Sunday love feast, he called it, the Sunday love feast, would, uh, should and will always work in most circumstances and most places if you can uh, uh, recreate it with nice prasadam and nice talking and especially if you're going out on the Hari Nam Pari like Ram Roy does every single day of the year, 365 days giving invitation cards to people to visit the temple. It's all, it's all a big strategy. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's strategy. It's not a social get-together. It's a strategy to make people Krishna conscious. So we have to keep that in mind. Right, Ram Rai? We have uh, Pancharatna Prabhu here, and he's uh, helping with that, making all different types of invitations, and uh, we have different programs, and uh, and results are happening. Right, Pancharatna? You will see results. I remember, just to give you an example, I, I was at a temple president's meeting many years ago. It was in Dallas, and... Um, you know, nowadays, most of the ISKCON temples in North America are managed by Indian devotees and have big Indian congregations. 
and less Westerners are coming. So a question arose, it was like a round table discussion. You know, how are we going to get Westerners to be interested in Krishna consciousness again? So everyone was giving their suggestions, going around the table, 50, 20, 25 devotees, and came to me. I was representing the Baltimore temple at the time. So I said, my opinion is we just have to do what we always did, and it will always work. And it will work, and it is working. And that, that is just what I explained to you. Harinam, invitation cards, or if it is book distribution, invitation cards, and, um, and nice prasadam, and nice kirtan, and nice preaching to the people that come. Now that we just sit and eat and talk about, you know, I went to the dentist last week and did this and that, we talk about Krishna consciousness to the guests and to each other. Hare Krishna. I just, I just want to thank um, Ram Roy Prabhu and Hansa Rupa and doing such an amazing job of keeping this all going. And it's just so gratifying, so heartwarming whenever I come back here, which is not very often, just to see that it's all still going on and that you're making new devotees, young devotees, you're training them so nicely and we know it's going to go on. You know, it's so gratifying for the older devotees to see serious young devotees, brahmacharis going out distributing books, Harinam going on. It's so, it gives us great solace knowing that it's not going to end with us, that it, it's going to go on. So we're, we're grateful to all of you. So, I think, uh, Mamata, your, your words have inspired the gods of the internet to, uh, to uh, make things work. And we have Apoorva. Uh, we can see him. Now let's see, can we hear him? Can you put him on the screen? Yes. Okay, but now we still can't hear you. Uh, but... Not on the big screen. Big screen. So he's there. And he's not showing up on uh, my side over there. So what do we do here to get his voice? Uh, what I could do is I could move um, laptop over there if you want him on the screen, and I could put the microphone next to your audio output. Uh-huh. You have your... your okay, hold on. My audio... Yeah. On the, on the laptop there, though, I'm not sure if it's showing up. Listening? Yeah, I can hear you, but... Uh, so but we're a part of a BCG uh, four-man, four-devotee crew that went out to Long Island. We stayed, we stayed and lived with uh, Narantara's family for two weeks. And um, Narantara, to this day, remembers how I befriended him. But besides that, his father... And so, <clears throat> we got a special darshan with... Oh, hold on, I don't know if anyone can hear you because... One second, Apurva. Uh, because we're not getting the microphone properly hooked up. And if I hold it too close, we get this huge echo. So, I'm just wondering what we can do here. Uh, yeah, I know, no one can understand. Okay, just hold on for a second, Apurva. We're getting the audio technician to work things out. That's, and then also uh, connect to the screen here. Hare Krishna Prabhu Prabhu, can you please try speaking?
Mm -hmm. Type 10. 